While trapped in a dark dimension that is as vast as space and as timeless as infinity, it can be difficult to find ways to occupy your mind between attacks from the creatures who inhabit it. Some of us take up knitting, and some of us simply spend their time weeping uncontrollably. Hello, I'm Andrew Boyd, and now that I have realized that escape from this dimension is futile, I have spent my time here compiling a list of the top five biggest NASA secrets they tried to cover up so that I might share them with you, and you might discover that things aren't always what they seem. Number 5. Music on the Moon In May of 1969, man had not yet set foot on the moon, and the United States and the Soviet Union were still locked in an expensive race to see who could get there first. Before the Apollo 11 mission could take Neil Armstrong to the moon's surface, where he could utter the famous words, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, there was one more mission to complete. The crew of the Apollo 10's mission was to fly in orbit around the moon and launch its lunar module, which would go 15.6 kilometers above the moon's surface before returning to the main ship and returning to Earth. The mission was considered a dress rehearsal for the moon landing that would occur two months later in July of 1969, a last chance to iron out any kinks so that there would be no surprises on the big day. But the crew was in for a surprise no one saw coming music from another world. While the ship was making its orbit, it made its way over to the dark side of the moon. For an hour, the astronauts would be out of contact with mission control and would have to fend for themselves. Once out of contact with Earth, they began to hear strange whistling sounds coming in on their radio that they could not explain. The noise and their reactions to it were recorded, and once they were back in contact with mission control, they filled their superiors in on the situation. Many theories were offered as to the origin of these sounds, such as magnetic fields or atmospheric interference, but these theories were debunked, as not only does the moon not have a magnetic field, its atmosphere is too thin to carry sound. This bizarre occurrence didn't interfere with the mission, and it was considered a success, which led to the Apollo 11 mission achieving the impossible and putting men on the moon. But the tale of this cosmic whistling was classified, and no one on Earth knew about the mysterious space music until decades later, when NASA's archives were declassified and made available for public access. What was this strange music? Was it simply malfunctioning equipment? Or was it a symphonic congratulations from the other species of the universe, welcoming humanity to the stars? We may never know. Number 4. The Black Knight This next story takes us through time, from the late 1800s all the way to the late 1990s, giving more than a century of lore to this supposed satellite from an alien world. In 1899, the famous inventor and physicist Nikola Tesla was conducting experiments with radio. During one of his tests, he claimed to hear a strange transmission that he believed was coming not from Earth, but from outer space. If this is true, it means that not only is Tesla the namesake for a line of self-immolating electric cars, he is also responsible for making first contact with alien life through an orbiting alien probe that had remained undetected by humanity for thousands of years. A similar story came to light in the late 1920s, when the radio engineer Jorgen Huls also claimed to have picked up a strange transmission that had echoed back to him after a delay. These long-delayed echoes, as they were later named, still do not have an official explanation, but many theorize that they originate from the same supposed satellite as the ones detected by Tesla years before. Similar stories began to crop up from multiple sources, including a science fiction author by the name of Duncan Lunin, who claimed to have decoded messages from the Black Knight satellite, which had revealed the existence of an alien race in the Epsilon Bootis, a binary star system in the Bootis constellation. In 1954, a UFO researcher claimed that the United States Air Force had reported that they had evidence of two satellites orbiting the Earth, an unusual claim since no country had yet come up with the technology necessary to launch a satellite. In 1963, an astronaut named Gordon Cooper reportedly called in a UFO sighting while making his 15th orbit during the Mercury Atlas 9 space mission. However, this incident is notably missing from the official NASA mission log. 
The seemingly biggest boon of evidence came to light in 1998 during the STS-88 mission to the still under construction International Space Station, where the first US module was delivered to the ISS, making it an important mission in the history of space exploration. During the construction, one of the astronauts saw something unusual floating above the Earth and managed to snap a picture of it. This photo was latched onto by believers in the Black Knight satellite as proof of its existence, but as they often do, NASA decided to be no fun at all and crap in everyone's oatmeal. NASA claimed that the photo most likely showed simple debris. Space journalist James Oberg, a man with possibly the coolest sounding job title ever, theorized that it was a thermal blanket that had been confirmed lost by the mission that had made its way into the atmosphere and gotten tangled up into a strange shape before eventually burning up. Is there a satellite of alien origin orbiting the Earth that NASA doesn't want us to know about? Or are all these stories merely a combination of technical issues and enthusiastic theorists? Perhaps this is something to debate in the comments below. Number 3. The Brookings Report in the year 1960, NASA's Committee on Long Range Studies partnered with the Brookings Institute to create a report for the House Committee on Science and Astronautics titled Proposed Studies on the Implications of Peaceful Space Activities for Human Affairs. Not surprisingly, when talked about in general conversations between UFO and alien believers, it is referred to instead as the Brookings Report. This section theorizes about how the public would react to the discovery of alien life and how it would affect society, and how the decision would have to be made on whether or not such a discovery would be made public. Some choice passages are as follows. Anthropological files contain many examples of societies, sure of their place in the universe, which have disintegrated when they have had to associate with previously unfamiliar societies, espousing different ideas in different life ways. Others that survived such an experience usually did so by paying the price of changes in values and attitudes and behaviors. Studies might help to provide programs for meeting and adjusting to the implications of such a discovery. Questions one might wish to answer by such studies would include, how might such information under what circumstances be presented to or withheld from the public for what ends? What might be the role of the discovering scientists and other decision makers regarding the release of the fact of discovery? While it is important to note that the report does not state whether the government should or should not cover up the existence of alien life, should it be discovered, it does state that this is a choice that would have to be made. This report was developed relatively early in the history of space exploration and was presented to policymakers. So we do know that people in charge of government policy were presented with a document that floated the idea of hiding the discovery of alien life from the people of Earth. I don't think the writers of the report were trying to hide anything, but the fact that a report featuring a section on what courses of action should be taken if hypothetically alien life were discovered, makes me wonder if this was actually just a way to get the answers they needed without revealing the true implications of the report to the writers. Number two, why is NASA altering photos? NASA has a program called Picture of the Day where, predictably, they post a photo from their various rovers and satellites onto the internet every day for public consumption. One day in late 2014, the photo they posted was a picture taken by NASA's Cassani orbiter of Saturn's moons, Dion and Titan. It is a stunning photograph, but one internet commenter found something he did not expect when he downloaded and adjusted the photo. While adjusting the contrast and brightness of the photo, he found that it revealed a huge object behind one of the moons that was giving off a rainbow-like aura. Even more disturbing, he saw the photo had been altered with black markings covering whatever it was behind the moon, proving that NASA had altered the photo before posting it. He took his claims online where they started receiving some attention, but before long he received a comment from someone he was not expecting, the person who had edited the original photo. A NASA employee who explained that the photo was not edited to try and hide any alien craft, but to make up for the technical limitations of the Cassani orbiter as it photographed the two moons. As she explained it, Cassani takes color photos by snapping three sequential photos through red, green, and blue filters. In the time that separated the three frames, Dion moved, so if I did a simple color composite, I would be able to make Titan look right, but not Dion, or Dion look right, but not Titan. 
So, I aligned Dion, cut it out, then aligned Titan, and then had to account for the missing bits of shadow where the bits of Dion had been in the two of the three channels. While this does seem to be a plausible explanation as to why the photo was edited, the original poster remained skeptical. He believed it was possible that NASA had ordered the photo altered before posting it, and then released the explanation once they were caught. Of course, one could argue that if NASA had taken a photo that featured a UFO and they didn't want the public to know about it, they could have just not posted the photo at all, rather than trying to Photoshop it out and hoping that no one noticed. Number 1. What is NASA hiding at the North Pole? In 2016, a researcher came forward claiming to have proof that NASA was trying to cover up something at the North Pole. He provided older satellite images that seemed to show some kind of crater or hole at the top of the Earth. He believed that this was evidence that supported the Hollow Earth theory. The Hollow Earth theory claims that underneath the surface of the Earth is more land, as well as a central sun located in the center of the Earth. The claimant says that these photos of a hole at the top of the Earth, first seen in satellite photos from 1968, may not be definitive proof that the Earth is hollow, but the hole's omission from subsequent satellite photos does prove that there is some kind of entrance at the pole that NASA is trying to hide. Many explorers have tried to reach this area, hoping to prove the theory's validity, but many of them did not survive the journey and those who did came back with stories that simply cannot be taken seriously. One group claimed that the hole was real, and that once they managed to lower themselves into it, inhabited by a small race of creatures. The explorers kept their distance but reported seeing some kind of factory in the distance that seemed to be running all throughout the day and night. Stranger still were the emissions being generated by the factory, as whatever was fueling it was giving off a smell not dissimilar to ginger. Not wanting to push their luck, the explorers took photos and came back the way they came, but when they checked their cameras, they found that some kind of magnetic interference from the pole had wiped their camera's memory cards. They came forward with these claims, and NASA firmly denied that their claims had any validity, saying that the explorers were simply mad or looking for attention. However, another government agency, NORAD, has been more forthcoming about what is happening at the North Pole, and released a report stating that it is a consistent site of UFO activity. Every year around the winter solstice, they've reported a small flying craft exiting the North Pole and traveling around the world at super speeds, seeming to visit every country on Earth in just one night before returning to the pole and not being seen again until the next year. What is this strange craft? Is it traveling around the Earth in order to spy on its people? Is it friend or foe? What is the purpose of the bright red light shining at the head of the craft? Is it connected to the explorer's stories? And if so, why has NASA not come forward to us with information? Hopefully I will see you again so I can regale you with more tales of the macabre and the mysterious here on Top 5 Scary Videos.